Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany, often tasting rare and exotic whiskeys to add something darkness. Talk about the brand in a moment. Canadian corn whiskey, hmm. aged eight years, Oloroso cask finish distilled in Canada, well, Canadian. Uh, 500 milliliters, limited edition, 64.1% ABV. Wow, are they trying to kill me? All right, so first of all, let's talk about darkness. Darkness belongs to Atom Brands, and Atom Brands was recently bought eight, five years ago, 2018, by Anheuser-Busch. So now, those of you who do not know, it's now AB InBev, Anheuser-Busch, uh, and they bought... Um, Master of Malt, and Master of Malt um, belonged to the Atom um, brands. And they also bought Maverick Drinks, which means they also bought that boutique whiskey company, gin company, rye company, and so on and so on. So this is actually now here a product, at least in the parent company of Anheuser-Busch, Budweiser. <laughs> ah, I think that's so crazy. All right, so let's go to a different thing that I think is a little bit crazy. Well, I'll pour this in the glass and let it have a little bit of time here to breathe, as I like to say. Now, in Canada, it's not necessarily the law, but it's common practice to distill things 100% um, corn. Then distill the next one 100% rye, and the next week 100% wheat, and the next one 100% malt. And what they'll do is, after it's been aged in the barrels, they'll often, according to Dr. Don Livermore, a guy I respect with a lot of my heart, they'll blend those products together so that they know what they are. A good example of 100% rye would be the Lot 40, 100% unmalted rye here, basically from Hiram Walker. Now, let's talk about those different companies for a very, very minute moment, some of the bigger companies, some of the bigger players here. Um, so, we have, for example, I just mentioned um, Hiram Walker Distillery. Pennell Ricard owns them. Uh, Gimli, that would be your um, Crown Royal Diageo product. If you go over to Alberta Distillery, um, Beam Centauri. If you go to Black Velvet Distilling Company, it used to belong to Constellation Brands. Now, um, 2012, when was that? 2021, uh, no, two, oh, I'm sorry, 2019. Um, Heaven Hill acquired Black Velvet um, Canadian Whiskey, including the brands and the distillery and stock from Constellation Brands for 266 million, which I think is almost a bargain to think about it. But hey, what am I, who am I? All right, there are a couple independently bomb brands there. There are many, many other ones. I'm not, I'm not even mentioning all the new ones, all right? So we have Highwood Distillers. We have Forty Creek Distillers, which I think also belongs to Hiram Walker. Not really sure. There's Valley Field Distillers. Um, and there's many, many other places out there that are distilling. Um, where did this come from? I don't know. I'm going to guess since it's corn, it's going to be from uh, Hiram Walker. So that's my, my guess. I might be totally wrong. Okay, now, what they do is, if you look at the website here from Blackness, I'm sorry, I always say Blackness, it's darknesswhiskey.com. Whiskey spelled like in Europe, without an E, one word, darkness whiskey. One of the first things they have on their um, thing is here, matured in octave casks. So they love the darkness eight-year-old, by the way, eight years of age. All right, and they're talking about uncovering the intensity of darkness. Intensely sherried whiskey. Every whiskey in our range has undertaken our signature maturation of six months in sherried octave casks. Interesting, sherried octave casks. So you could just say seasoned. Of course, all the casks are today basically seasoned. Um, but they might actually um, just take an octave ca cask. So 500 liters is standard for a butt, 250 is standard for a barrique or a hogshead, 200 to 190 would be a barrel, and the octave, according to darkness, is 64 liters. At the moment, I and we have a quarter cask, which would be maybe 125. At the moment, I have 
four or five octaves in Scotland? I don't know. I forgot. How many did I buy? I bought a couple of those, and they're going to, at the moment, I'm going to give it like a two-year maturation. There's there's juice in there that's been aged for six to eight years someplace else, and then it's going to get another year and a half, two years here in octave cast. Ta-da! And it looks like sher sherry syrup, and it's going to be excellent excellent sipping whiskey it's not a complex whiskey but that's what they did here and that's what they do with all of their products so if you ever see the darkness which are i think still illegal in the u.s not because of the brand not because of the technique but because of the bottle size 500 milliliters are not a acceptable size in the u.s they might have changed it when they changed the rule for the 700 don't think so but I do know Glenn Arachi back then when they when Billy Walker took over, he made these tiny little 500 ml bottles and it was the anniversary and the distillery was, I don't know how old, 50 years or whatever. And there's like, oh, we can't sell them in the States. Whoops. <laughs> and the same thing with darkness. This is very, basically a European or is a world product except for the US. Isn't that great? All right, so what am I going to do? I am I tried this in my German video as well. Um, we have here one of the wet, worst whiskeys of the world, I think. I went to the, I'm sorry, one of the worst whiskeys I have in my shelves from Canada. J.P. Weiser Rye Blended Canadian Whiskey. Uh, a tradition of quality and craftsmanship since 1857. J.P. Weiser. Who imported it? Pedro Ricard. Who owns here in Walker that makes it? Yes. All right, so what we have here is we have a little bit of whiskey. This is, for me, basically 90% vodka and 10% whiskey. And they just age it a little bit in a cask and say, here, you can buy it. It's not expensive. So what am I going to do? I have here a tiny little bit of sherry. This was Lustau. This was Muscatel. And I'm going to pimp my whiskey and see if I can actually... So I added much more than I did in my German video on purpose because it was still not enough. All right, I'm trying to get the same amount of color here. Look, I'm still not there. <laughs> I added way too much sherry in there. All right, and to get this color. Um, a corn whiskey, if it's 100% corn, if it's less than eight years of age here, if it's been matured probably in, um, in England, in, in Scotland they call it distillery wood, and Canada they call it Canadian wood. Uh, Canadian barrels because they're ex-bourbon usually and then you put Canadian whiskey in it so it's a refill yeah second fill third fill fourth fill and that's what that would I think this was matured probably in like a third or fourth fill um, American oak cask that had first had bourbon and then one two three four times before that I had something else so send it over to the UK let them work on it and let them finish this I don't even think they sent the barrels over I think they put it in these uh, totes, which is a basically a thousand liter plastic container that a forklift can move around. You can put on a nice little container. You can put a lot of, you stack them to three high. You can stack a barrel too high. Um, can you stack them three high? I think so, it, but it's 280. I think they're like one meter, so I don't know. All right, you can stack them two to three high. <laughs> <laughs> and you can put them in there. You get a much more efficient use of that space in that container. Send it over and then um, use it there. So let's, oh, that smells good now. All right, let's, the thing that I'm really missing here is I'm missing the original distillate. I'm getting the sherry. And I think I wanted to, I want to continue one of my thoughts that I mentioned before a little bit. And I know this happens in some in the whiskey industry already. If you have a sherry cask, I'm gonna use the word cask here. Yeah. Could be the butt, it could be hogshead, it could be barrel, it could be um, I octave. And um, you just pour the sherry in there again, and you roll it around a couple times. You forget to empty it, and look, is it a first fill? Is it a? Does it say first fill? It says here Oloroso cask finish. So, it's Oloroso cask. It's not Oloroso sherry. Also, that is an interesting thing. Here it says finished in sherry casks. And here, how many bottles? I do not know. I do know that the market in Germany has a few of these. And um, we'll see. All right, 64.1%. 40, €44.90. I do get a little bit of that typical Oloroso sherry moment, but nothing of the original distillate. 
it's almost as if someone bulldozed over everything else that was originally there with that octave cask finish. Cheers. Mmm. If you don't know this expression, this means heat. And actually, I should go, wow. It's almost as if someone put in the afterburner. It's almost as if someone, like, had that uh, uh, actual flame from the back of my throat all the way down my ex 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 exophagus down to here. Wow. Ha. Um, <clears throat> it's a little bit of a plastic type of artificial sweetener type of moment with the berries and the leather and the a um, little bit of the, 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 the herbalness going on here from that sherry. That's a hot one. Wow. That is really too hot for me. 64 about one. That was not enjoyable. Let's try it a second time. I've now brought the 64% down to about 50, maybe two, I hope. Let's see, 50, 52. Getting more of a more of an artificial leather, artificial plastic moment here. A little bit like softeners that are in plastic. Ugh. still hot still not good C minus minus D plus plus why did I buy it I haven't seen a, a new Canadian whiskey here in Germany for two years Ralphie just recently said um, all the good bourbon is kept in America and I've said for the last six years, all the good Canadian whiskey is kept in Canada. And so we're doing something about bringing over good American whiskey over to Europe with N10 bourbons. Um, but um, we're not touching Canadian whiskey yet. I don't think we will. Um, value for money. Don't forget, this is the 90 euros per liter, which makes it about 70 something for a bottle. I can get two and a half lot 40s for this one price. No, thank you. No, thank you. All right, my experiment. Give me a little bit of water, try the JP Weisers. I don't even think they sell these anymore in the, in, in the on North America. I think they sent over the rest over to Europe and there were some suckers like me that bought it. I think I ruined my sherry with a bad whiskey. Have you ever done that? Have you ever had something that was not great and you poured something good into it hoping it would make it also good and it just kind of ruined both of them and stayed terrible? I think that's what happened here. Cheers. Mm-hmm. Mm. Muscatel, sherry sweetness. That's, that was actually enough muscatel to take over the taste of the whiskey. Mm. And you leave me with a nice, pleasant flavor aroma. It's watery. It's 40%. There's very little else going on there except for that Moscatel Sherry moment there. Um, but what, what would I like to drink? My pimped up rye whiskey. Rye whiskey? <laughs> it's a question. Is there any rye in here? I don't even think there is any rye in here this, in this mash bill here. So you do not need to have rye in a Canadian rye to sell it as rye. Rye is just the just the same thing as whiskey. It means a type of grain whiskey made from grains. All right, my question of the day is, um, let's go over here to Canadian whiskey. What is your favorite Canadian whiskey out there? Mine is definitely going to be Lot 40 still. That's my go-to whiskey. Love it, enjoy it, um, recommend it all the time. Um, Food Quig is going to recommend Shelter Point, if I'm right, Food Quig. Andy, is that what you're going to recommend? And other people are going to recommend other things here from other products and other things. But what is your favorite Canadian whiskey? 
please, please write it down in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here tasting. Hmm, rare and exotic whiskeys. Thank you for watching, and I hope I gave you a little bit of an insight, even though there's no guarantee that everything I said about the history or about the um, ownership of the different brands and the different um, distilleries are 100% correct. But I hope I gave you a tiny little insight into the um, Canadian whiskey industry. All the best. See you soon. Bye-bye.